Welcome back. We're going to use an example to illustrate the uh, relationship between value to book ratio and market to book ratio. Um, we're going to use a similar template that you have seen before uh, with stick and shake, but this is for the current chapter. Um, notice that the current market price for the firm is $309.98 million. So pause the video if you have not downloaded the template and I'll see you over in Excel. Here we have the template for stick and shake. Um, some of these are familiar to you. We've seen this before. The assumption that long-term growth rate is 10% and cost of equity is 9.34%. In addition to that, since we are looking at market value ratios, we also include the current market value of the firm. This is the enterprise value. It's $309.98 million. And we also include the most recent net income. Um, so this is our forecast net income in year one is 24.7. 1.8 million is what was reported. So um, both the net income for year zero, the 21.8 million, and the market value of 309.98 million, and the starting book value of 165.8 million. These are all easily verified, uh, verifiable um, values. So these are high quality, high quality numbers, whereas the forecasted number, the forecasted net income uh, and forecasted future cash flow, those are subject to assumptions and um, calculations of the analyst. What we're going to do is we're going to compute the value to book ratios. We're going to, so the first step is we're going to compute the um, ROE, our, I use um, um, CIRE, but basically this is the ROE uh, for, because for this company, we assume that comprehensive income is the same as net income. So that's one of the important assumptions. So ROE is simply earnings. So net income divided by the most recent book value. So that's our ROE for year one, and we can compute that for the next 11 years. Then um, again, let's refer back to our formula. I mentioned this many times. We want to um, write this down so that it's handy for you to reference so you understand how we are implementing this formula in Excel. So this is the first thing we computed is the ROE. Next, we're going to compute this difference. So the, the difference between the two, uh, we're going to compute the residual ROE. Residual ROE is defined as ROE in each time period, notice there's T on it, subtract the cost of equity. And because cost of equity remains the same throughout the entire forecast horizon, we can make that an absolute reference. Now that you're more familiar with Excel, see the intricate um, difference here. So this is, has the letter T, that means it's going to change from year to year. So we keep this as a relative reference. Since ROE, cost of equity, does not change, we will use an absolute reference. You see we will do similar here, where we have book value that changes from year to year as the, in the numerator, but the denominator is always the initial book value in year zero. So you guessed correctly, this is going to be relative reference, this is going to be an absolute reference. So we're going to compute the cumulative book value growth. Remember that we're going to use the most recent book value. So in year one, the most recent book value is year zero, divided by the initial book value in year zero. And the denominator is going to be absolute reference. So as we change the, the next year, we'll take year, two, year one's book value divided by year zero's book value. So we have created a formula for both of those, and we can once again copy it to the remaining years. Okay. We have computed the residual ROE and the cumulative book value. So we have the numerator. 
Now we can multiply this two because that is the numerator in our formula. So we take the residual LE multiply by the cumulative book value growth. So that's just the product of these two. Before we compute the present value, we're going to also we are going to compute the continuing value first. Continuing value occur in year 10. Remember, we're not computing the present value, so we can ignore the discount term. So to compute the continuing value, we need the ROE for year 11. T plus 1 will be 11. And then the book value growth rate as of year 10 divided by the difference between the required return and the growth rate. And that is why I computed all this ratio for year 11 as well, even though we only need 10 years of value. We are computing the value for year 11, so it's easier for us to compute the continuing value. So remember, the continuing value is equal to the product of the residual ROE times the cumulative book value. So we already have the product of these two divided by the difference between the required return and the growth rate. So now we have the continuing value year 10. We'll add these two together and then we will compute the present value of that. So this is the residual ROE times the cumulative growth rate plus the continuing value in year plus 10. So it's the sum of these two. Again, we'll only do it for 10 years because that is our forecast horizon. Once we have that, we can compute its present value. We use the MPV function like we've done before. The discount rate is the cost of equity, so 9.39%. And then the value is all the value, including the continuing value. So this is the present value. Remember that we have a, so we have the sum of these two, so we have the second and the third term, we still have a constant of one that we need to add back. So this is the initial constant. This is always true, so this does not need to be in a, this is one of those ex uh, exceptions where you actually put a value in the in the model, but this will never change. So we this this becomes our value to book ratio, and this is before the mid-year adjustment. So that will be the sum of these two. And the value to book ratio after the mid-year adjustment means that we take this times 1 plus the required return of 9.34% divided by 2. Once we have computed the value to book ratio, we can use it to estimate the firm's value. Remember, value to book ratio is based on book value. So first, we let's apply this. So we want to apply the value to book ratio to estimate firm value. So the financial metric that we use is book value and of course is the most recent book value so this is book value in year zero so this is the market uh, this is value to book so the financial metric is the one in the new, in the denominator in this case is the book value so let's just copy that down book value in year zero is 165.8 and then to estimate firm value, we simply take the financial metric, in this case the book value, times the multiple. The multiple is the value to book ratio, so 2.98. So we take the financial metric times the multiple, and that's how you come up with 
a firm value. So whichever ratio you're using, just choose the corresponding multiple um, and and the, and, the, and the corresponding uh, financial metric, you multiply the two, you come up with your estimation. So it's extremely easy to compute. So now we have the market to book ratio, um, the value to book ratio. Let's also take a look at the market to book ratio. Remember the market to book ratio is the market value and in this case, that is 309.98 divided by the book value. Book value is 165.80. So we see that the market to book ratio is smaller than the value to book ratio. So we would conclude that the market is um, under, if you believe that your valuation is correct, then the market is implying that the company is undervalued. Let's take a look at a few other ratio. Uh, first, let's take a look at price earnings ratio. Remember that price earnings ratio um, ideally should be based on forecasted earning. So if we're gonna do forecasted earnings, we'll use earnings in year one. And price earnings ratio is equal to um, market value. So that's 309.98 divided by forecasted earnings. So net, net, net income of year one. Here's our price earnings ratio. We can also compute the value to earnings ratio. Value is what we just estimated, the $494 million, divided by earnings in year one of 24.45. So you can see that the price earnings ratio is smaller than the value earning ratio, so once again, um, how we determine that the value of this company is greater than the market price. You can also see that the as the current market price is 309 million, 309.98 million, whereas we think the value is 494 million. So is our estimate is quite a bit higher. This is the ideal price earnings ratio, but most of the time, if we don't have forecast earning, we'll actually compute the price earnings ratio using historic earnings. So if we do that, the price earnings ratio will be the price divided by the net income in year zero. So this will be the historic price earnings ratio. And this is the expected price earnings ratio. And the value to earning, again, we can compute the historic, um, value to earnings ratio, it is, of course, not surprising, um, also higher. In the most recent example, the value to book ratio is not one, and the market to book ratio is also not one. That means that uh, the market thinks that the value, uh, the, the market price of the firm is different from the book value, which is actually most of the time, the case, and the value um, that we estimated is also different from the book value. So why would they be different? So what makes um, market value or our estimated firm value different from book value? First, let's take a, uh, remember when we, when we derive the residual income valuation model, we showed that Wealth or value is created when the ROE is greater than the required return. In other words, if manager is able to earn a return on equity greater than what stockholders are demanding or requiring based on the risk of the firm, manager is creating value, creating wealth for shareholders. And um, under the residual income valuation model, the three factors that affect a firm's value are the future ROE on an income, comprehensive income on net income, uh, the growth of book value, and the cost of equity or the required return, which is dependent by the systematic risk of the firm if we use the capital asset pricing model. So a firm's uh, value to book ratio will also differ from the industry average. If the firm's expected future ROE return, um, 
the required return or book value growth different from the industry average. Um, and the value to book ratio will change um, if the current expectation is different from the firm's historic average. So when we compare a firm's value to book ratio to the industry average book to uh, value to book ratio, or when we are comparing a firm's market to book ratio to the industry average, we want to look at how is the firm's book value growth, cost of equity, and ROE differ from the industry average or from the firm's um, history. So what do we what have we learned about market to book ratio? A lot of academic study has focused on th this particular ratio. What researchers have found is that market to book ratios tend to be fairly stable and mean reverting. Mean reverting means that uh, firms that have lower than average market to book ratio will increase over time. So that means their price will tend to go up. Firms that have higher than average market to book ratio will decrease over time, meaning that their price, their, their price is going to go down. So firms with the highest market to book ratio tend to have the highest ROE um, through the ten, next 10 years. And firms with the lowest market to book ratio tend to have the lowest ROE through the next 10 years. In contrast, firms have the highest market to book ratio has the highest growth rate in book value. And vice versa, firms that have the lowest market book ratio has the lowest book value growth rate. So these results are consistent with um, mean reversion. Mean reversion means that over time, ROE will converge to the industry average. And this is what will happen with um, market competition. If your firm has a higher than average ROE, you attract competitors. Competitors will copy either your product or your strategy, and their ROE will increase over time, and yours will decrease relative to your competitors. So in the long run, ROE will tend to converge to the overall industry average. We will end this video here. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look to price earnings ratio and value earnings ratio. See you soon.